Hello everyone, welcome to Podcast Charge, episode 14 of the Charger Bulletin. I am your host, Hector Ramirez, alongside a good long-term friend of mine, Dylan. What's up, guys? My name is Dylan. <laughs> so, Dylan, give us a little background of you, of you and you and age. Like, what year you are, major. Okay. I am a senior here, studying psychology and English. Um, I write movie reviews for the school's paper, and I am currently an English tutor. This is my first year ever doing it. Nice, nice. So uh, you're you're English major, you said. So psych major, psych English major. minor. English minor. Okay. Yeah, I tend to just say study both. Yeah, yeah, might as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so a little bit of background on our history. Yeah, yeah. Because we met in uh, Professor Timlin's class. Freaking Timlin. <laughs> Freaking Timlin. Yeah. So I uh, I think it was what sophomore? No, freshman. It okay. was I think spring semester. Freshman year, and then fall semester, our sophomore year. Yeah, an amazing teacher. He is by far one of my favorite teachers I've had so far. Yeah, definitely. He was just so out there, and uh, I love the guy. Um, He was just so passionate about writing and reading. Yeah, definitely the most fun thing about Timlin, though, was he had this silent F-U rule for the (laughs) class. And so... Obviously, you couldn't say F you, yeah. you know, in class because you had to be appropriate for school. But you could get away with saying, hey, Dimlin. And it was implied <laughs> that there was an F you in that. Yeah. And that was like right away, that first class, this is going to be my favorite professor. Yeah, he's one of the most memorable for me. Uh, especially oh, when I got up from the class when he was talking. He's like, oh, Hector needs to go because he doesn't like this book or whatever, I'm like, no, I just need to go to the bathroom. (laughs) I love that, though. He was such an outgoing teacher. He would always pick on people. Yeah. Very outgoing and very passionate. Mm, Very, very. Very passionate about his stuff. But that's when we first met and uh, we started talking because we had the same love for reading and writing. Yes, Um, indeed. So, uh, but again, welcome to Podcast Charge episode 14. We kind of went off a little bit. But yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. official podcast of the Charger Bulletin, New York New Haven's very own uh, newspaper, which is nice and informative. I love writing for the newspaper for Charger Bulletin. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately for this episode, though, we don't have a newspaper. Nope. And that's because Halloween just passed, and I guess we just kind of got like a little break from it. So. Well, that no, was nice. Yeah, like it was break. an awesome break. Oh, man. Uh, but no uh, paper for this week, so what we're just going into is talking about uh, Dylan's topic. And it's a very fun topic. Uh, he's, he actually has some examples for us lined up mm-hmm. here, uh, which we'll get into more. But if you want to stick to the Charger Bulletin, you can always go to ChargerBulletin.com to be up to date on the latest and greatest of University of New Haven. You can also follow Charger Bulletin on YouTube here, so click the subscribe button, click the like if you, if you like what you see here. You can also go to Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Charger Bulletin. Uh, and we have a new Facebook. We have a Facebook page for Podcast Charge. Oh, yeah? So go and like that. I'll be on the description below if you want to do so. Okay. So let's get into straight the topic of what you brought here. <laughs> so what's, what's your topic today? So the topic today is really good movies that Dylan Ruprecht loves. <laughs> there you go. Starting with the movie Her. Which wow. Okay. Obviously, this is not going to be able to read it. No, Straight it's okay. <laughs> They'll see Walking in Phoenix's face. They'll be all right. I know what that is. A very mustached uh, Walking Phoenix, right there. Yeah, yeah. These are all uh, surprising to me too. So whatever he's pulling out. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know. What's I saying? pretty much just uh, looked at my two bookshelves because I have two full bookcases with nice. my favorite movies on there, and I just picked. All right, what four movies are my favorite right now on mm-hmm. this moment? And I just picked the four that stuck out to me, and I'll explain them real quickly. So the reason why the movie Her, you haven't seen this movie at all? I have. You have? I saw it on an airplane. You did? Yeah, which is not the best way to watch Her. No, nah, definitely with, without doubt, no. But I had, uh, I had headphones, and I, once I saw it, I got sucked into it. Yes. Like, it really grabs you. It's very immersive. Um, to give a very brief uh, summary of it, the Theodore here, the main character, falls in love with his iOS... Um, a, ten, a, ten, a technological device, and the whole scope of the movie is about redefining what love means. Mm-hmm. And being a psych major and everything, um, you know, that's why this movie really appeals to me. Nice. But it's kind of controversial, too, because it raises the question, you know, can someone fall in love with uh, a handheld device? Yeah. 
and yeah. with just a voice. Yeah, with just a, well, a very yeah. sexy voice, though. A very sexy voice. Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I'd say of all the sexy voice in the world, it's definitely Scarlett Johansson's, and I was go as far as to say Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think Scarlett really takes the cake with that. I mean, her performance in it was amazing. Very amazing. And she's doing the same thing in uh, the new Jungle Book adaptation, the live-action movie. We're talking about Scarlet here? Yeah. yeah really? She, she's actually playing the snake. I was not aware of that. Yeah, she's playing the snake. So again, it's her voice portraying a character. Ah, perfect. Yeah, so, I mean, after I saw her, I, like, I, I was... I, I have mixed feelings on her because like, I yeah. felt so heartbroken. Not mm -hmm. like, not like I, did, I liked her or didn't like it. More like, I felt so heartbroken that I actually felt for, like, a machine. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I don't know how I how to explain it correctly like well that's just a testament to how good the movie is exactly yeah. uh, what really makes the movie too is the music which mm -hmm. was written by arcade fire too so if you're a fan of arcade fire you're gonna love this movie very immersive um i don't really know what else what else to say other than if you watch it you know i mean it's like the one of the things like i love about her is his pacing yeah because like pacing's the pacing really is really really well done like it, it sets you up for what kind of world this is yeah and then it just brings in Scarlett Johansson like okay so this is a new thing that they're messing around with and then he, he just talks to her more and more and like they have really like true conversations no without a doubt very you know? true like uh when they're in the park and they're just like making up stories about people they're watching mm -hmm. you know like it's so like a relationship wise and um I mean I, w I don't want to say anymore because I want to spoil people on it exactly but it takes you places in terms of how you feel it's very relatable. Um, anyone uh, who's ever had feelings for any other person can relate to this movie. Yeah. You just have to get over, you know, the abstract idea that one can fall in love with an object. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It goes so much more into that, and that's why it's on my, my favorite movies list. Yeah, that's a very good choice. Very All good choice. right. Uh, you mentioned Jennifer Lawrence. Well... She also made the cut. Silver Linings wow. Playbook is also one of my favorite movies. <laughs> there you go. That's one of my favorite movies, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, being a psych major, again, it deals with two people who have um, mental disorders of some sort. And um, mixed together, it has a beautiful, chaotic relationship that's really fun and at sometimes destructive. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, very. Yeah, very distracted. Very <laughs> Not only just the two main characters, which is Jennifer Lawrence's character and Bradley Cooper's, but also the family. Yeah, yes. Because yeah. Robert De Niro is the father, too, and he's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, I love Chris how Tucker's in it, too. Chris Tucker, which yeah. Which is awesome. He's mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite actors. Yeah? In Rush Hour. Oh, of course. Yeah, <laughs> so. Mine's uh, The Fifth Element. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice, there Chris you go. Chris Tucker's role in that uh, at the end. Oh, he's, The yeah. pop diva guy. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, the, I think white hair. Almost. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a little out there. Yep. <laughs> Just a little bit. I like out there weird characters, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, he fills that quota completely. Um, but for Silver Lines Playbook... Mm -hmm. This was the movie that like started their, their duo together, Bradley Cooper and Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. Like it from did. this it spawned American Hustle and now I think they're gonna be in another movie together. Uh, I think it's called Serena. Yes. It already yeah. it already went out on Netflix. Didn't do too well from no? what I saw. No. But um again, another movie with them. It's just a testament to their chemistry on camera. Yeah, I always like so. when actors uh, like just work together with each other. Yeah, it's like Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore. Or Adam yeah. Sandler and everyone else part of the Adam Sandler crew that's in every single movie that he's in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so Silver Lines Playbook, though, um, I can't remember the first time I saw it, but, I mean, when I did see it, it intrigued me so much. Uh, I never thought I could like a romance movie as much as I did with Silver Lines Playbook, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, it's just Jennifer Lawrence, her character, like, she's such a good actress and... The film and the way she just she just hooks you in mm -hmm. and bradley cooper you just feel for his situations even if you don't have really any uh knowledge of his mental disorder yes um again a, another movie where the at uh, the actors and the situations feel so real very real very real indeed and for me personally it kind of hits home because bradley cooper's character has a borderline personality disorder and a member of my family has a bpd so, oh, so yeah, you definitely. So it. yeah, it just yeah. resonates the whole time. It's very accurate too, from a psychological perspective. If that you know is of interest to anyone. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, 
That is, it's a funny thing you mentioned that too because when you look at Jennifer Lawrence's side mm-hmm. and like she's just so like out there and she just doesn't, doesn't care. And you're just like, man, what's wrong with her? Because you realize because she has mental disorder, she can't help it. Mm-hmm. So you kind of you, you fall into her situation. You just love them. You, know? you yeah, fall in love with them. Uh, music's pretty good too. Yeah, their dance scenes. Yeah, are dance just... scenes are amazing. Oh, really good actually. Yeah. Not their specifically, but it's, it's amazing yeah. in a different way. It's so hilarious. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. Yeah, that's the one thing too. Like this movie tackles a very hard situation, but it's so funny. Like in the in the moments that it is, you know. Lots of humor. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Um, that that tends to be a re- reoccurring theme that I love. A lot of humor embedded in a very dramatic kind of heavy topic. Yeah, I th- yeah, that's actually the, for some <laughs> reason like those elements play off so well. Oh yeah. Um, and who is the director for Sylvester's Pick? Because um, he's the same director for American Hustle. Well, we can see right here on the back. I can't remember his name. It sh- I should remember it though because uh, I, I I love this movie enough to. Look oh, it's the it. same guy who did uh, American. American Hustle. Yeah. For yeah. some reason, I cannot find. I got. I bought this used, unfortunately, and it covers <laughs> everything here that would normally give you the director yeah. on it. Let me see. Uh, it Somewhere might be on the there. bottom, maybe. Um, uh, music by Danny Elfman. There you go. I didn't know that. Oh, that is David O. Russell. David O. Russell. Yep. That's who it is. David O. Russell, who directed uh, American Hustle. So he's a, he's a really prominent director, actually. Oh yeah. Uh, he he directed a couple movies at Jeremy Fulmer. It's like I want to work with that guy. Did you see American Hustle? Yes. I actually, unfortunately, did not. You didn't? No, that was one of the movies. Uh, I went to the movie theater with a bunch of my friends, and sometimes we like to all see different movies and then just mingle with each other. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, so we don't actually like end up that. seeing a full movie at all, but we see a lot of sing- similar movies together. Yeah, yeah. I mean... It was good. It was good. It was uh, It was. not my favorite. No? No, like I like several Life's Playbook better. But yeah. it was definitely good to see once or twice to really... Yeah, get. those are also completely different beasts of movies anyways. Yeah, right? yeah they're tackled very well. Yeah. It's just... Uh, it, I don't know. It's not my favorite, but, you know. Hey, to each his own. It's sort of. It's sort of. So, good, good choice. Love so, I'm so loving far, your choice of movies so far. Good, yeah, yeah. This is just a small sample of all the movies I have back in my dorm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, last year I, I did like twenty dollars sale for twenty movies. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes like I just feel like I'm talking to you know my friend here, and I forget that we're freaking being recorded. So. It's okay. No, it's fine. It's like they just they'll enjoy it. They'll like it. We All love right. Movies. Movies. Or movie nerds. Oh, completely. Yeah. Uh, third movie I have is um you might have heard of it. It's called The Dark Knight. Yeah, Ooh. came out wow. you know a Big while hitter. ago. Christopher Nolan. Uh, Christopher Nolan, actually, this is one of the two movies that made my my top favorite list. Um, I don't even know where to begin with this movie other than, for me, it's simply perfection. <laughs> you, <laughs> you think know? so? <laughs> Just going to set the bar low, say it's the utmost perfect mu- movie. Whatever movie you present after is yeah, yeah, like right. so big I can't read this, but no, I am... Um... Oh, I Perfection? appreciate I appreciate all these movies for very different reasons, but yeah. The Dark Knight, from like a cinematic perspective, was just unbelievable. Amazing uh, special effects, amazing acting. We have the late Heath Ledger, who probably gave his best performance he's ever done. Mm. Uh, one of the best performances to ever do, Joker. I believe, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. No, this was actually the movie where my my dad not super moves at all. Like, no. he doesn't really like him. Oh. I made him watch The Dark Knight, and he was like, I actually like that. That was really good. That's that was the winner. Really good. Yeah, exactly. So, that again, that's the, that's the winner. Like you said, uh, I agree. I totally agree with you. He, that was the best portrayal of Joker I've seen live action. Definitely. Ever. Without a doubt. Oh, I get goosebumps even when I even when I watch it. It's probably one of the most quotable movies. Mm-hmm. I really... If you haven't seen The Dark Knight... You know, yeah. Please go watch it. The ending, like sequence, is just to me always sticks out in my head because mm-hmm. the music, the really inspirational uh, monologue that 
Gary Oldman has at the, at the end of the movie. Yep. Again, mixed with the music and just everything, Batman going, his bat cycle, just, oh, it, just, it, it screams excellence. It's just Oscar epic. worthy. Oscar worthy, epic, your attention. It's like two and a half hours long, but it doesn't feel like that long because nope. you're just invested in the movie. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I just had to put it on the list because it's. One of my favorites. Yeah. I felt like the beginning of it was just great. Oh, yeah. The so, freaking opening. Yeah. I mean, talk about an opening, right? Yeah. Talk about an opening, how to introduce this character. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> the bank scene. It was awesome. Yeah. It was great. Uh, man, I need to watch this movie. Actually, I've been really going over I need to do, like, a Dark Knight uh, trilogy, trilogy yeah. marathon. Because The Batman Begins it has a really great opening, too. Uh, this one, I would say, would take the cake, too. Definitely. Um, and then the third one's a nice way to complete the trilogy. Yeah, I like it. Even then, the third one, in my opinion, just did not do nearly as much as The Dark Knight did, though. Mm -hmm. Just for, yeah. for a time, after I watched The Dark Knight Rises, I was like, I like that better than The Dark Knight. Really? Mm -hmm. For a time. But then I came to my senses, watched the movies again, and The Dark Knight <laughs> is where it's at, you know? Well, I mean, both movies offer very kind of different appeals and uh, that's a very general statement but in the dark knight it's all about how he is going you know like the joker is just a menace because he just seems unstoppable mm -hmm. you know his motives are all over the place and if a movie has a very good um antagonist like that it's it's just naturally oh i just gobble it up yeah yeah <laughs> and it, it's like more from a psych perspective too Whereas, oh, uh, completely. whereas Bane and yeah. the Dark Knight Rises, I felt like he was more, he was a, you know, he he was B A. Oh, completely. Yeah, he was yeah, a, yeah. he was enormous and and scary, but he just from a psychological perspective, like the Joker was delicious. Yeah. Whereas Bane was like, <laughs> all right, I can take you, Bane. Yeah, I, I just love how the whole the trilogy itself, though, it's really, yeah, yeah. it's a must watch because you see. This man become a symbol, and how the elements around him try mm -hmm. to break every part of him—his spirit, his courage, his body, everything—and you see how he comes back off of it, mm -hmm. how he handles it all. And Dark Knight just goes into the part of uh, his spirit. He, Joker trying to break his spirit and crumble it, yeah, and make sure he never comes back up. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he does want him to come back up because that's you know the dichotomy of those two. Uh, that's how they play, they play off each other. Very much so. So. Very, very good choice. Alrighty. And the last one I have, it's actually not um, as re uh, modern as these three movies. It was actually Christopher Nolan's uh, second movie, not his debut, but his second movie called Memento. This one I haven't seen. You have not seen this movie at all? No, I've not seen Memento. It looks Memento. Like a, looks like a journal. So this is actually, um, I got this DVD case to uh, specifically look like a psychiatric file. <laughs> because the premise of the movie is about this guy who has short-term um, retrograde memory loss. So he can't form any new memories or any new short-term memories. Okay. So when he loses, uh, when it loses focus or loses attention, it could be within an hour. It could be within 10 minutes. As long as he loses his train of thought, he will literally not remember anything that he did. Interesting. So the movie is shot in reverse. Interesting. Okay, so it, so it, you it jumps, so it, it kind of puts around. you into his perspective. Yeah, it yeah. jumps around all over the place. Okay, and um, it was Christopher Nolan's his second movie before he got really big with like the Dark Knight franchise, mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a testament. It's a huge. It's a. It's a. It's really different from any other movie you'll see. Okay, you just gotta maintain your attention with it. Interesting. Okay. It's a movie that gets better, too, the second time and the third time you watch it, because you'll pick up on other things you didn't see the first time. All right. Okay, and so and is there any, like, leading... What are the leading actors in this movie? Um, Any, like, shout-outs to... So, you know how and... Nolan normally has, like, the same characters now, at least, like, with Inception and Dark Knight? He normally has his, like... He has, like, Michael Caine. He has, you know, Chris, Christian Bale now. Mm -hmm. Anne Hathaway has been in several movies. Yeah. Well, this movie had no real main uh, actors. Like, I don't even remember the first, the, the protagonist's actor's name. Okay, so it has, like, some yeah. just uh, not known actors, which is good. Because it just puts them in the spotlight, kind of gives them a chance to see exactly. what they put forth. Yep. Um, it came out in the early 2000s, and... I, I bet that kind of movie's really like pushed into like a 
psycholo- psychological class. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, so many of my psych professors have mentioned this movie too. Yeah. And then at the end of class, I'll be like, "Hey, I know what movie you're talking about," and then we'll have a chat and we'll yeah. laugh, haha, best friends, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's not really mentioned other than any time we they. Like an intro to Psych, they'll be like, oh, uh, memory loss. And then they'll be like, have you ever seen the movie Memento? And then I'll be like, yes, I have. And we're just like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, most people haven't seen this movie. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, I actually, I took psychology and film here at University of New Haven. I want to take that class. It was fun. Ooh. It was fun. I, I can't... I, for the life of me, I can't remember the list of movies that we saw, but like a couple, they range like from transgender movies to uh movies about memory loss uh and i can't i can't forget i I can't remember the movies but um psychological movies yeah Yeah. good Good goodwill hunting is another movie of mine i didn't bring that's a good one yeah um psychological uh some of them were around um treatment treatment so i forgot the the title of it but like the movies center around was uh these kids who had mental disorders or even uh addiction problems will go to a center and teenagers around our age would help them get oh, better. Oh, okay. So that's the movie center around. It was very dramatic. Yes. Very, very dramatic. It was very good. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember. But every time we finish a movie, we'll write a paper about it and how that related to psychology. What kind of treatments will we do oh, and stuff like that? This sounds like, my, <laughs> you know, like, like this class would just be so easy for me. It wouldn't even be work. No, it, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Like I wrote every paper like it was... A recreational it was so much fun see that's why i need to do it was good yeah definitely take it definitely Ooh. take it um so an amazing set of movies i mean awesome i have not seen memento but i should definitely put it on the list yes without doubt uh so whenever this is done i might even just let you borrow the movie <laughs> like, it's a movie that will blow your mind if you haven't seen it before really yeah okay i'll, I'll check so it different. out i'll check it out i'll see if it's on amazon prime yeah, because huh. that's the godsend for movies. Amazon Prime. Yeah, definitely the, like, prime. Here's the plug. It's the prime of the Amazon. Hey, why not? It's a student discount. Is it really? Yeah, fifty dollars. Oh, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime. Two days shipping. Prime. Two days shipping. Two days shipping. <laughs> Just send an email. It's like seriously. Why have Amazon. you not signed up for Amazon Prime yet? I well, don't know. I know it's the again. It's, it helps out students. I sent an, an actual tweet to them saying, "Thank you, Amazon Prime. You are the best." <laughs> and, they were, and they were applying helping costumes every day. And they put like ramen noodle symbol in there. There you go. <laughs> I was like, that's awesome. Uh, so for movies though, my favorite kind. Um, I won't go too much here because I just there's so many I can think. Of, but uh, the most prominent are Disney movies. I love, love, love animation. Uh, standout movies are The Lion King, Frozen, definitely Tangled, Hunchback mm-hmm. uh, of Notre Dame. It's a forgotten one. It is. Yeah, uh, again, all all musicals, too, but I love those because I love when lyrics tell a story. Well, yeah. So, uh, you definitely see that within, like, Frozen or Tangled, anything like that. Uh, but I would say for more realistic movies, not realistic, but more, like, your kind of movies, uh, Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York, okay. Have you seen that one? Yeah, with Scorsese and, and uh, DiCaprio. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that of was... Of course, it's a classic. Yeah, that was the first rated R movie for me. And that's the one my dad introduced me to. He's like, yeah, you'll like it. It's really cool. That was the first rated R one for you? Yeah. Yeah, it was my first rated R movie that I've seen. And, oh, my God, it just blew me away. Yeah. It was so complex. Very And complex. at that time, I didn't really understand a lot of the complex uh, stuff until I saw it again and then again and then again. Mm-hmm. And that ending just sticks out for me like a, not a sore thumb, but it just sticks out for me. Like, uh, it's, oh, my God. And that movie was made after... The two, uh, the Twin Towers. Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's kind of hard to mm-hmm. really hit home how awesome that ending was without spoiling it. Yeah, you know? yeah. The whole movie tells, like, a really awesome story about New York City, right? Mm-hmm. And and the gangs of it, like, the Irish population fighting. I, yeah. Yeah, some other No, it was very, very early America there. and when they started to settle in. Yeah, and uh, they just they talked about the five points of New York and who should run that those five points because that was like basically the center of New York and who's yeah. gonna be running the rest of the city, and uh, it surrounded two gangs which were the immigrants and then the natives. Gotcha. Okay. So, and the immigrants were the Irish. Though. Mm-hmm. The we were the Irish. Um, they were being uh, deported, or not deported. They were being um, immigrated. They were yeah, immigrated yeah. to America to start a new life and all that. Uh, and 
that's the one that really sticks out for me right now. Okay, Gangs of New York. Yeah, Gangs of New York. So, Disney so it's, it's Disney movies or Gangs of New York. <laughs> that is such a stark contrast. <laughs> I just realized that. <laughs> I just, yeah. I mean, obviously, the movies you point out are just amazing, too. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, those are the ones that really stick out. I mean, Harry Potter, too, because that's just a long line of movies. Just mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A book adaptation. Oh, how can I forget? Um, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Ooh, freaking fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Lord of the Rings. Yeah, my friend came up to me the other day. He's like, hey, man, I can't get into Lord of the Rings. I'm like, you have no soul. Mm. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry, but no, I, I really love that too because I'm more of a fantasy yeah. person. Uh, I love you know swords and medieval times, all that kind of stuff. And Lord of the Rings just hit that spot for me. Good. When it comes to the characters, just the performances, the music, yeah. the set pieces. I go for hours on Lord of the Rings, man. It's like a masterpiece. Yeah. Honestly, the amount of work that Peter Jackson put into it. Oh, completely. Freaking. Every time I watch Lord of the Rings, though, my problem is I just want to be legless. I just want to have a bow and arrow, and I just want to start doing that crap. And then it makes me sad when it's like, wait, life isn't like that. Yeah. So why the freak did I watch it? I'm it's so sure. good. Yeah. It's so good that it upsets me every time I watch it. Trust me, I want to take a four foot sword like Aragorn yeah. and just go into a crowd of orcs and just just, just start killing crazy. them. Yeah, deflecting awesome. swords with your sword. Yeah. Did you know that 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 part in in, in the fellowship was improvised? Really? Yeah. So um, oh wow, the actor accidentally threw the uh, the sword or whatever it was at him, and so he's really deflecting it with the sword. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, against. I can't remember, but that big orc's name. Yeah, the one who. Yeah, the the one who pulled out a knife out of his yeah. leg and just licked it. Yeah. Yep, that's that. the one. <laughs> yeah. That was like a yeah. real prop that mm-hmm. Ar- the guy who played Aragorn had to actually move, like deflect with the sword. So that was a real deflection for wow. his for his life. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I did not know that. Um, I knew one. Uh, little tidbit for those of you who are not really into the behind the scenes of Lord of the Rings, but when um, Viggo Mortensen, when uh, he was coming from that carcass all full of orcs that were burned in okay. the towers, yeah, yeah, and he kicked the helmet, and he did let that awesome yelp that he was just so disappointed and upset, that was not acting. The reason why he yelped that loud was because when he kicked the helmet, he kicked in the way where he broke his toe. Oh! Yeah. So when he kicked it, Broke his toe, he turned that into a performance, just allowed that yelp. So that was a yelp of, ow, I broke my toe. Not because of the situation. Oh, wow. Well, well that makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> yeah. It was, I mean, the more you know, right? Yeah. I, when I saw it, I was like, wow, Viggo Mortensen. You're mm-hmm. the man. You're the man, Viggo Mortensen. You just broke your toe in front of a camera. Yeah. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of interesting facts about Lord of the Rings that I love. Like, yeah. Orlando Blue fell, fell off his horse, broke his ribcage. Uh, what do you think about the, the Hobbit movies, though, then? Um, I thought they were good. Good, right? That's it. I, just, thought, I thought they were just good. Just good. <laughs> That's it. The ending, the last one, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm mixed up about it. Uh, Smog was awesome. Smog was really cool. The dragon, he was just awesome. It was Benedict really cool. Cumberbatch. Oh, that, that, that man. That man. <laughs> Oh my gosh, he is he is another form of God. He me. is. <laughs> uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, amazing performance. Yep. He's actually yep. going to be Doctor Strange in new Marvel movies. Perfect cast. Oh, completely. He's going to be perfect for that. Yeah. So um, Sherlock. Yeah, Sherlock too. I, I saw a couple of that. And he was just he's just he's in it. He's in his own like, in his own character for Sherlock. It's awesome. Without a doubt. So. But yeah, I'll say those are the highlights. Disney movies, Game Disney of New movies, York, yeah. and then Lord of the Rings. Well, Disney movies, yeah. like, for me, it's just, how do you not love something that you grew up with? For me, it's just about, it's nostalgia, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It is definitely nostalgia for me. Even, yeah. But yeah, but even, like, Frozen, which came out, like, two years ago, mm-hmm. even though, you know, I was, you know, 18 when it came out, like, yeah, yeah. I'm still obsessed with Frozen, yeah. just as much as I am with Lion King. Oh, completely, yeah. even uh, with the Pixar movies, like, Inside Out, Yeah. I just saw a couple of days ago, and, and I just can't believe that they achieved mm-hmm. this kind of, kind of storytelling. Inside Out kind of made me cry a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, you, you can't uh, help All it. the Pixar Disney movies really are trying it. to, like, yank the tears out of your face. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's see how many adults you can make cry in this uh. movie. Uh, but yeah, they just do things that I, just, I love. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I want to work for Disney. Oh, is that what you want to do? Yeah, yeah. Go into communications and uh, public relations. I want to work for the parks. Very nice. Yeah. Little fact about me now. I want to work for go. Disney. Not a bad career choice. Oh, not bad at all. <laughs> not bad at all. I highly recommend it. Come with me. I'll get, yeah. I'll get you discounts. Yeah, all <laughs> so right. So Disney, hire me first so I can get this guy discounts. Guess we're going to Disney World, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going right. to hold you to that, though. Oh, completely. You can't just make you're, that. No, you're on the list. You're on the list. Everyone saw that. <laughs> it is foolproof. You're on the list. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the wrap up for. Uh, actually, it's dark out. Oh my gosh. It's very um, dark. Yeah, but this is the wrap up for podcast chart episode four. Thank you guys so much for joining me and for Dylan for joining me. You're definitely going to come back. Woohoo! You're definitely coming Lots back. Of fun, guys. Um, talk more about movies, talk about anything. We talk more about Charge Bulletin. We'll actually have news next time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but thank you guys for joining me so much on this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed our little talk about movies or our long talk about movies. I can go off for hours. Yeah. Honestly. So, uh, thank you guys again. And I'll see you next week for episode of Podcast Charge. Again, you can follow the Charger Bulletin at ChargerBulletin.com. Also, the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Charger Bulletin. You can follow the fo- Podcast Charge on the Facebook page. So, there's going to be a link in the description below. If you like what you see here, click that like button, click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week on Podcast Charge. Peace. Mm-hmm.